What's up, everybody? Tom Cosm here. Very happy to announce today the release of Osk Buddy, which is a collection of Max for Live patches made with VJs or visual artists in mind. I came up with this patch last year when me and the amazing Andy Thomas, uh, whose work you're looking at now, uh, we played a set at Azora Festival and we wanted it to be a complete AV set, so fully synced to the music, everything in time. So I came up with this patch and since then I've had quite a few VJs hit me up wanting it, so I've made it for free today. What it does is it gathers information from Ableton Live, such as frequency information, volume information, or MIDI node information, and sends that over OSC to a different computer or your own computer, and can be used as a modulation source inside your VJ software, or you can use it for anything that receives OSC messages, which is a lot of software. Um, so let's have a quick look at how it's working here. I've got a master patch, as you can see, which is receiving all the information. And then throughout the set, I've got these inserts or senders if you like so I've got one on the bass one on the kick one on the snare and I've also got one on some other things but to give you more of an idea on how this actually works I'm gonna start a new set from scratch and explain all the features to you so when you download the zip file of Osk Buddy, you get four Max for Live patches. Here they are here. We've got one master patch and three inserts. I'll get to the inserts soon, but the main one is this master patch. You have to have this in your set somewhere. This is what sends the OSC information. So I'm going to drag that onto my master track of my Ableton Live project I've got here, and here it is here. We've got four individual senders, so these send four individual data streams of information based on things that we will specify soon. Um, but what you need to do is know where you're sending the information. Now, if you're sending it to software running on the same computer, you want to be using your uh, local IP address, which is 127.0.0.1, but I'm going to be sending it to a different computer, which I'm running Resolume on, and I know that is 192.168.0.0.1. Dot zero dot seven. That's the local IP address of the computer that I'm sending. Now, OS, OSC also needs a port. I'm running my port on 7500. So the resolume which I'm running on my other computer is set up to receive OSC messages on port 7500. Once I've set that information, I'm going to hit update, and you'll notice it's updated all the ports and all the IP addresses in these four senders. You can have individual IP addresses for each of the senders or individual ports if you're going to be really fancy and use different computers or whatever, but I'm not going to be doing that for now. I want them all to be the same. The other thing you need with OSC is an address. Now, everything that receives OSC will have an address. So if we look over in Resolume here, if I go into my mapping mode and go Edit, edit application OSC map, everything turns green, and you can click on something and find out what the OSC address is down in the bottom left. So I've selected layer one, I've picked the dashboard of the layer and the very first macro, and that is layer one forward slash link one forward slash values. If I was to go out of OSC mapping and go to layer two, go back into OSC mapping and click on the opacity now, you'll see we've got layer two link one slash values. So this is the first macro in the dashboard. Um, um, I won't get into how Resolume works in this episode, but it has a dashboard which is kind of like macros in Ableton Live in a rack, so you can drag anything into one of these macros, and when this changes, it will change that parameter. You'll see I've got four separate layers here, and each layer, I simply have the opacity of the layer applied to macro one. So that's layer one, two, three, four, is, and all it's doing is changing the opacity. So I'm just gonna click update here on set all the addresses. So it's set all the addresses to the same, but I don't want them to be all the same. I want this one to be layer one, but I want this one to be layer two, hit enter. I want this one to be layer three, hit enter and this one to be layer four dot enter. So now each one of these senders is going to be changing the opacity of one of the four layers in the volume, which is all good. So let's have a look at the inserts now. Over here on this uh, operator MIDI track here, it's a very, very simple kind of saw wave sound. I'm gonna drag the note insert. Now the note insert goes before any instruments in your MIDI track. So I'm gonna drag that right down here. And this is what it looks like here. It's very simple. It just has a simple drop down menu. Which of the uh, senders or inserts do you wanna send it to? One, two, three, or four. I'm gonna keep it on one and it's got a value box here. So as I push a note, you see it shows us the velocity of the note. So very quiet and very loud. 
goes up to 127. Now if we go back to our master track on the first sender here, I'm going to pick note. I'm going to give it a signal value of 1. The signal determines how much or how amplified the signal is. And now when I push this, you see it's capturing that MIDI velocity and it's sending it across over OSC and consequently changing the layer in Resolume. Very good. So that is for the note insert. Let's go ahead and also add the CC insert. So I'm going to put the CC insert here. Now again, it's got an insert number. I'm going to change this to 2 and I'm going to change the CC number to 1 because CC number 1 is the mod wheel which is over here so as I move the mod wheel you can see the value moving from 0 to 127 if we go over to our master plugin I'm going to set the second sender here to CC give it a value of 1 and as I move this up and down you'll see that it follows along with the mod wheel and that of course is changing the um, Capacity of layer 2 in Resolume. So that is the CC insert. Now let's talk about the final insert, which is the amp insert. I've just got a simple loop here. I've got four uh, separated layers. I'll play that loop for you. So you see we've got a kick track here. What I'm going to do is add the amp insert into the kick track. I'm just going to drag it in. This can go anywhere in Ableton where there's audio. So it can go in an audio effect rack, it can go after a chain of effects, it can go after a synthesizer, it goes anywhere. And what it does is it picks up the amplitude or the volume that that channel is currently sending. So you can see that value happening here. You also need to pick an insert number just like before. So I'm going to pick three because I've already used one and two for the note and the CC. There's also a speed limiter. Now by default this is set on 50 milliseconds the speed limiter is it basically says how much information gets passed how quickly so if you find that you're lagging quite a lot you need to raise this to maybe 100 milliseconds or 200 milliseconds I've kept it at 50 you could get down to 20 if you find it's not sending data fast enough um, even though it says zero it is actually currently set to a default of 50 so now that amp insert is on the kick track, I'm going to go back to my master. I'm going to pick amp on number three, and you see we're receiving the data, and I'm going to bring the signal up to one. And you see we've now got some pretty simple data coming through of the volume that's happening in the kick track. I'm actually going to use the signal to boost it because it's too quiet at the moment. And if you notice over on Resolume, we're now getting video happening when the kick is playing. I haven't talked about the rise and the fall yet, so I'll do that really quickly. This basically gives it a little envelope at the start and the finish of the data. So if I was to add some fall to this, and we look at the graph, you can see that it kind of fades away. It gets a decay. And if we look over, over on Resolume, we can find like a nice right level. So it doesn't suddenly disappear, it kind of just appears. And with that, we also have a rise, so we can have it kind of fade up as well. And back to Resolume, you can see that it's now fading in and fading out instead of being very abrupt. But I'm going to bring the rise back down to almost zero because I like it when it suddenly comes in like that. And let's bring the fall down a little bit and the signal down just a little bit as well. And that's really cool. Now we can use all three of these together. Very, very, very good. All right, the next one I want to show you in this list is we have this one called Param. So I'm going to pick Param for my fourth sender here. Param needs to be attached to a particular parameter in Ableton Live. Almost anything in Ableton Live can be attached to this Param. So I'm just going to put an auto filter after it. This is on the master track. I'm going to go map and I'm going to map the frequency of this cutoff filter. And you'll see that this is all updated. This track, frequency, auto filter. So as I move the frequency, I need to give it a signal, sorry. So signal one, as I move the frequency, you'll see that it's now following the frequency of uh, this 
cutoff filter. And you'll see in Resolume as well that that is corresponding to yet another layer. So let me play the audio. As I bring that down, it fades away. And as I bring it up, that layer opacity rises. So that is the Param one. The final one I want to talk to you about is the Freak one. Now this one is quite interesting. Let me just delete the auto filter here because we don't need it anymore. I'm going to choose Freak. Now the Freak one is more for people who are uh, playing premix files or perhaps DJs or um, something where you don't have kind of individual control over things like the kick or, or the snare. So when I pick Freak, you'll notice nothing happens. But what I can do is click and drag these red lines to specify a frequency range. So if I just wanted to specify the bass, I just pick these values here. Let's bring the signal up a bit. So this is kind of the bass range. We could do just the mid range here. We could do a bit of a bell curve if we want. Or we could pick just the highs. And you can see Resolium going really mad now whenever there's kind of hi-hats or things like that. Let's see if we can get it kind of around where the snares and the skanky stuff is. And of course we also have the rise and the full value here. You can pick even uh, different bands like so, so we can get some of the kick and stuff and we can get some of the mids. So this is really good like if you are playing premix files, you can have three frequencies like this and you can have just the uh, low end and then you can have just the mid and then for this one you can have just the high. So it's kind of like an EQ that you can use to control different layers in uh, well, it's kind of like a, a mixer. You've got your low mids and your highs. Um, the final thing to note is there is a option here to send 0 0.0 to 1 point or 0 to 127 because some OSC applications accept different values. Resolume, which I'm using, uses 0 0.0 to 1 point. So that means 0, uh, it sends decimal places. You can see the value here of what it's sending signal's very high, that's why it's going above one. But you'll see how it's only sending things up to one point, or one dot. But if I was to pick zero to 127, it's now sending zero to 127. So that is just specific on the application that you're currently using. And that basically sums it up for now. It's in alpha version, so some things may not work. Uh, if you find any bugs or anything that isn't working, please let me know. I'm going to link in the description to a post where you can go. You can make feature requests. You can leave comments, bug reports, uh, anything that you find or anything that you want. Please go and visit that post and post there. Um, the link to download this for free is also in the description. And go and check out Andy's artwork, andythomas.com.au. The link is in the description also. He does amazing work and he's been so kind to uh, give me some clips of his original work to use for this exhibition example video and also thanks to Resolume for letting me use their software uh, in this video as well and that's pretty much it and I'll update you guys when there's more updates in the future cheers Tom Cosm